Darien Lake has had a very interesting history, especially after its first stint with Six Flags. The park has been owned by a couple of different property groups and has been operated by a total of four different companies in just the last 15 years. This isn't really something you want to have happen. And if you'd like to learn more about why this is not a good thing for the park, check out this video in the i box in the corner of your screen. Long story short, Darien Lake has lacked any sort of a clear and coherent vision from any owner or operator during that time span. The park is beaming with potential, and it's something that I really wish Six Flags would capitalize on. However, one of those operators did show that they understood how much potential this park really had, and even though they only got to run the park for three short years, you can certainly tell they made an impact. That operator was the Hershend Family Entertainment Company, the owners of some of the best parks in the country with Dollywood and Silver Dollar City being in their portfolio. When Hershend's lease ended, Darien Lake was on the verge of becoming a really good amusement park. The park was in the early planning stages of adding what would have probably been by far the best roller coaster in the park, but unfortunately, this never came to be. Today, I'll be explaining the story of the park's forgotten Lake Monster wooden roller coaster project. To add an even extra fun element to this video, I decided to team up with Elite Coasters to help show you what adding a state-of-the-art world-class roller coaster to Darien Lake would look like today. Before we go any further, make sure you subscribe to him as he makes some great content that I personally really enjoy. While you're at it, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more amusement park content as well. Anyway, let's jump in with a bit of a history refresher on Darien Lake. Superman, Ride of Steel. One of the tallest and fastest coasters in the world. Over 20 stories high, more than a mile long. A searing 10 seconds of weightlessness. Now at Six Flags Darien Lake. Darien Lake really was in a weird spot after the premier slash Six Flags spending spree in the early 2000s. Darien Lake seemed a little bit less desirable for investment as it's located between the cities of Buffalo and Rochester, New York, neither of which being that big, but it did give the park a decent base to work with. However, the park did greatly benefit from that aforementioned spending spree, culminating with the park receiving four roller coasters in a span of just four years along with various other capital investments like a hotel and a water park expansion. However, the financial troubles the chain would encounter left this park on the outside looking in in terms of investments. The park would go on to only receive two new rides and one water slide in the final six years of the park's first stint with Six Flags. Darien Lake and a handful of other Six Flags properties were sold to park management and CNL lifestyle properties, creating the leasing situation the park still operates under today. The park will receive a few notable additions like an off-the-shelf San Perla launch coaster in Orange County Chopper's Moto Coaster in 2008 followed by some water park additions and a few park improvements, but there was really no consistency in terms of investment. In 2010, park management wanted out of their lease agreement with CNL and they were forced to find a new operator to lease the park to. This led to the park's day-to-day -day operations being turned over to the Hershen Family Entertainment Company, who have been recently working to expand Dollywood and Silver Dollar City to make them real competitors on the national scale. They took over in 2011 and they got right to work on putting in new investments for 2012. Hershen added a new family area called Rowdy's Ridge, which is still over 10 years later regarded as one of the best areas of the entire park. It remains as one of the few areas to actually have a distinct name and theme. Hershen went back to that same formula in 2013 with the addition of the new boardwalk area, which included renovations to the Grand Carousel and Giant Wheel along with the addition of a new SNS drop tower called Blast Off. Once again, this area is still considered by many to be one of the nicest in the park. It was soon made apparent that Hershen had full intentions to continue investing into Darien Lake with the release of a concept for a new attraction in a guest survey. A guest survey that the park sent out in 2013 indicated that they are heavily considering adding a new thrilling roller coaster to the park's coaster lineup. The concept that the survey showed was an inverting wooden coaster with a length of 3,190 feet 
along with elements like a zero g camelback hot reversal suspended corkscrew and the first wooden coaster to feature a wing over drop which is an element predominantly featured on wing coasters like Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. Here's a brief description on the theme and storyline for the roller coaster. It's rumored that a beast lurks deep within the waters of Darien Lake, making itself known only to its shuddering prey. Those daring enough to seek it out will be met with a half mile of heart-pounding thrills never before seen from a wooden coaster. Lake Monster is not for the faint of heart. There's a lot to unpack about the speculation behind this concept. The most important thing to note here is that it was likely just that, a concept. Probably just a work in progress at the time. So even if it had been built, it likely would have looked different, especially since they wanted to hear guest feedback. There's a few things I'd like to address regarding what the project was supposed to be. Many people thought this was advertised to be a remake of Predator using wooden topper track from RMC, but I find that unlikely. If you look at the two images on the survey, the one on the left appears to be the corkscrew on Hades 360 at Mount Olympus, while the one on the right appears to be the double barrel roll from Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. And the image in the background also appears to be from Outlaw Run. Even though RMC never did a topper track conversion on any coaster, it would certainly be possible as the company has been known to retrack wooden coasters. But if you were going with RMC, why not use their already established steel iBox track? I get that the concept was still relatively new at the time, but still I don't see why they would want to take a chance on something new, when you could basically get the exact same results by using the iBox track. Even with the possibility that RMC could hypothetically use the topper track to convert Predator to a new coaster, I don't think the wing over drop would have made much sense on Predator's lift hill the way it is currently oriented. If you look at the way the lift hill and drop for Predator are currently positioned, this likely would have meant the layout would have had to go the opposite direction of the current drop with the pullout from the inversion being where the scrambler is currently located. The scrambler wasn't located in that plot of land at the time, but this maneuver still would have required a whole new structure to get the coaster back to the main layout. It also may have intruded on the pathway that takes you to Ride of Steel that fits directly under the ride's current lift hill. They could have also just gotten rid of the turn at the top of the lift hill and pushed the first drop out toward the lake, but that still would have required a massive new structure. I find that this would have been awkward and wouldn't have made much sense because this would have required additional track length to accommodate the new element. To start with, Predator has a length of 3,400 feet, and the track length would have had to have been shortened by 210 feet, the advertised lake monster being only 3,190 feet long. Although some RMCs do feature a shorter length than their wooden tracked predecessors, this would have led to the ride being significantly shorter than Predator in the time you actually spent on the course doing the main elements. If this coaster was to replace Predator, I would have to guess that most of the structure would have had to have been torn down to accommodate these changes and the new elements of the ride. This survey also came out shortly after the opening of Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City within the Hershen chain, so it's likely that the company was impressed with the results of this coaster and they wanted to build something similar like Outlaw Run at their other big parks. This is supported by the fact that Dollywood would go on to build a topper track coaster with lightning rod. Some have also said this may have been a gravity group project, but they still have yet to do multiple inversions on a coaster or work with Hershen on any major project, so I find that unlikely as well. To me, it sounds like this coaster was supposed to be the product of the success of Outlaw Run. You can see this in the similarities in stats with each coaster featuring two inversions and there only being about a 200 foot difference in length between the two. This would also help to tie a bow on top of the park which had just received significant investments to greater its appeal to families. Adding this coaster would give the park a fresh appeal for thrill seekers to bring them back to Darien Lake, giving it a similar appeal to a park like Silver Dollar City with its mix of thrilling rides and more immersive family experiences, albeit on a smaller scale. The biggest mystery with this concept was why it didn't happen. Hershen would continue to operate the park until the end of the 2014 season, but their lease abruptly ended, leaving Premier Parks to become the new operator of the park. Some have claimed that it was the park's owners, CNL Lifestyle Properties, who did not want to invest in the park, but I think this is another false rumor. Across the industry, many parks are owned by one company and operated by another. For example, within the Six Flags chain, parks like La Ronde, Frontier City, Six Flags Over Georgia, and Six Flags Over Texas all have different leasing agreements that Six Flags runs them under. 
situation that you may be more familiar with is the current leasing situation that California's Great America operates under. Cedar Fair just recently sold the park to a company called Prologis that wants to repurpose the land to better fit their business. California's Great America is currently being leased back to Cedar Fair for the time being before they eventually close the park, as stated in the agreement they made. The park just opened a new flat ride called Pacific Gliders, so by the logic that we're holding Darien Lake to, Prologis would have had to have bought the ride only removed that ride in a few years. You can see where this is going. Now there's a slight chance that there was slash is a different agreement in place for Darien Lake, but I highly doubt this knowing how common of a practice this is in the amusement industry. The nearby Niagara Amusement Park operates under a similar agreement between Store Capital and IB Parks and Entertainment. And I can almost guarantee you that Store Capital isn't buying rides from Mexico and bringing them up to the park. So really, the reason for Lake Monster never coming to fruition was because Hirschend, for whatever reason, did not choose to renew their lease. My best guess as to why this happened was because the park failed to show any positive response from the first two investments. I find this to be very plausible considering that the park just had one of the most notorious amusement park accidents in recent history. In 2011, the first year of Hershen's tenure, James Hackamer, an Iraq war veteran who had lost both of his legs in a roadside bombing in 2008, was ejected from Ride of Steel after operators failed to follow the park's safety protocols. This negatively affected the park and gave them a bad reputation among locals. There's no way to tell for sure, but this likely stunted any growth that the park may have received from the additions in 2012 and 2013. When Premier Parks came in, they likely did not want to fork over the large amount of cash to go through with the project. So if this is what happened, it makes Lake Monster really a victim of unfortunate circumstances. Like I said earlier, this concept was just on a survey, so it may have never even gotten that far down the pipeline. But the fact that they would make that information publicly available means that Hershen likely had intentions to add a major roller coaster of some sorts to the park. It's really a shame that Darien Lake hasn't been able to get this kind of investment that a park of the scale deserves. I'd really love to see Six Flags put something fantastic in this park. Let's say all of a sudden, Six Flags wants to make Darien Lake one of their best parks, or become rich and buy the park. Like, comment, and subscribe. And they try to build one of the best roller coasters in the world. So let's throw the mic over to Derek to talk about this modern day lake monster. My concept for lake monster is quite a reach for what Six Flags could realistically add to Darien Lake. However, with a small park such as Fun Spot Atlanta adding an RMC, and Six Flags giving Great Escape a new coaster, who knows what could happen. Either way, this concept is just for fun to see what a modern RMC could look like at Six Flags Darien Lake. Lake monster would be placed near this former amphitheater, next to Predator and across from the Boomerang. This coaster the coaster isn't too unrealistically tall, as the drop is just under 136 feet. The layout takes heavy inspiration from RMC's most recent iBox layouts, Air Force One and Wildcat's Revenge. One thing to note before I start covering the layout is that this concept is designed with five car trains instead of six, allowing for the layout to feature more compact maneuvers. Lake Monster features a pre-lift that turns counterclockwise a little bit so that the lift hill will drop the coaster onto this small peninsula here, which will be utilized throughout the layout. The drop is followed by a speed hill that turns slightly to the right, before before the train flies up into a zero-g winder, obviously inspired by the beginning of Wildcat's Revenge. This first inversion is followed up with a zero-g stall that crosses over the water back onto the main plot of land, creating this awesome off-ride visual here. The zero-g stall is followed up with this massive outward-banked wave turn, inspired by the same element on Iron Gwazi, except this is a bit higher off the ground, allowing for more sustained airtime than otherwise. This is also the strongest airtime point on the ride, as backseat riders would experience negative 1.3 Gs on the exit of this element. All other airtime moments on the ride range from negative 0.6 to negative 1.1 Gs. The train rises up into a double down, inspired by Wildcat's Revenge, except the lateral moment isn't quite as exaggerated, allowing for a more pronounced airtime moment on the second quote-unquote down. This element brings the train back out onto the peninsula where it heads into a braking wave turn, included as a nod to the more frequent usage of this element on Wildcat's Revenge. The train crosses over the water one final time with these back-to-back -back elevated airtime hills. The next maneuver resembles a mini switchback airtime hill, providing a pop of floater before smoothly transitioning into a barrel roll as the train falls to ground level. The layout ends with a sharp airtime hill and hop into the brakes, which is very similar to the ending of Wildcat's Revenge. Lake Monster is just under 3,100 feet long and has 11 airtime moments and g-forces ranging from negative 1.3 to plus 3.3. Six.
Thanks, Derek. If you haven't already, go check out Derek's channel. He makes some great content, ranging from no limit stuff to awesome countdowns, and I highly recommend it. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave us a like and comment down below about what you think happened to this concept, or what's the best ride that Darian Lake could add today. And don't forget to subscribe for more amusement park content coming soon. With all that being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.